China has a knife violence problem. The Chinese Communist Party doesn't like to talk about it. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. As we've all been told, everything in China is harmonious. But that might not quite be the case. And the content we're going to talk about in this video may be disturbing. Which means I can bet you, YouTube will demonetize and maybe age restrict this video. That means YouTube is going to prevent people from seeing this. Even though this is a really important story, and we're choosing not to show any gratuitous violence. You can help us fight back against the censorship by sharing this video, and if you can, contributing a dollar or more on the crowdfunding website Patreon. That lets us stand up to YouTube's demonetization, and we'll give you some cool perks as a way of saying thank you. Visit patreon.com slash chinauncensored to learn more. So here we are in Guangxi Province, southern China, where in April, Xi Jinping did an inspection tour. Yep, the mountains look good. Yep, your tiny kitchen looks good. Yep, the giant red star looks imposing. But the day after Xi Jinping's visit, there was a brutal knife stabbing in the same region that killed two people and injured 16, including children. The suspect's wife worked as a teacher in the kindergarten. The two divorced because of a quarrel. The man then climbed the fence and broke into the kindergarten and knifed people. Even his own son was hacked to death. Now, there's no evidence suggesting that this knifing was related to Xi Jinping's inspection tour the day before. But for the Chinese Communist Party, the timing was very inconvenient. Social media platforms like Weibo quickly blocked users from discussing the incident. But perhaps this knifing was just an isolated incident. At least, that's how state-run media report on it, every time it happens. As if it's a very rare event with absolutely no larger context. But unfortunately, knife attacks happen a lot in China. Back in 2010, the Chinese government publicly promised to prevent these incidents, even though they um, almost never happen. They've given the death penalty to a number of the perpetrators, and they've also tightened public surveillance measures. But that clearly hasn't solved the problem. In 2018, in Chongqing, a 39-year-old woman assaulted a group of kindergartners with a kitchen knife. In 2020, in Guangxi, a 50-year-old security guard attacked 39 students and teachers at a kindergarten. According to Ding Shui Liang, a sociology professor in Hong Kong, the Chinese society has generated enormous pressure on individuals, and some of those individuals have perhaps had emotional and psychological problems. They want to cause general attention from the population, and attacking kids perhaps is the best way, from their perspective, of achieving this objective. Chinese society appears harmonious if you look at state-run media reports. But there's a huge amount of pent-up anger. And people aren't even allowed to talk about it. There's no outlet. A video that circulated online this May shows a man in Nanjing running over his ex-wife with a car in public. The man later ran out of his car swinging a knife and injured seven nearby pedestrians. In May this year, a woman brought a fruit knife into the Shanghai Business Center and attacked five people. Earlier in June, a man in Anhui in eastern China attacked people in the street with a knife. These acts of violence seem to be getting worse. And they're not just knife attacks. In May, a man drove a car through a red light on purpose, plowing right through dozens of pedestrians in a crosswalk. The suspect, a hairdresser named Liu, had decided to take revenge against society after losing money in a failed investment scheme. The police said Liu had not been drinking or on drugs, nor did he have a history of mental illness. He was clear-minded when he committed his crime. These revenge against society attacks are some of the darkest social issues facing China. So much for everything being harmonious. If you haven't heard about it, it may be that Chinese state-run media are too busy to cover it. Instead, they spend their energy on more productive things, like criticizing America's gun violence. You see, according to state-run media, 
China can offer lessons to the U.S. in protecting human rights. The U.S. should learn from China and genuinely protect human rights. If the U.S. does not control its guns, problems caused by firearms in the foreseeable future will continue plaguing U.S. society. Now they're right, the U.S. does have a problem with mass shootings. But in China, no one is allowed to have guns, and there are still essentially the same problems, but with knives and cars. And yet, according to Chinese state media, rampant gun violence makes the U.S. a proven hypocrite on human rights. Gun ownership and deaths are out of control in the U.S. And how can the U.S. police the world when it can't even protect its own people? Surely if the U.S. adopts China's model of authoritarian harmony, that'll solve everything. As long as you censor what gets reported. And now, to do what Chinese state run media would never do, answer a question from a supporter. Ooh. Especially from a freedom fighter. I think the best way to handle the CCP is to boycott all Chinese goods. Can you think of any other way to hurt the CCP? You make a good point, Freedom Fighter. The way to hurt the CCP is to go after the money. But it should be about more than just boycotting goods. That's a great way you as an individual can help. But what can have a larger impact is if Western governments, I'm looking at you, America, stop their companies from investing in China. The CCP is running out of cash, especially American dollars. It needs dollars to sustain its own currency. So one thing China's doing is opening domestic bond markets. They're trying to get foreigners to invest their American dollars into China with the promise of big returns. They want you to think, wow, they're giving me an opportunity to make money. They're not giving you an opportunity to make money. They're giving themselves an opportunity to make money. But American investment companies are pitching it, and American investors are snapping it up. You're giving the CCP the money it needs to sustain its authoritarian regime. And also, it's a trap. You're not going to get your money back, stupid. Don't do it. The U.S. government has already restricted investments in certain Chinese companies with military ties. But Wall Street needs to know that investing in China is bad for their bottom line. If the world stopped pumping money into China, that would hurt the CCP. Badly. In fact, it would eventually bring down the CCP. But it's a long road ahead. Thanks for your question, Freedom Fighter. Be like Freedom Fighter and join our China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, fans who support us through the crowdfunding website Patreon. It especially helps when YouTube is constantly demonetizing or restricting our videos. Visit patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.